Hello and welcome to Shed TV, my name's Keith and this is part 2 of the £100 Ford Fiesta Saga. If you watched the first part you'd know that uh, I replaced the, uh, the battery uh, with a new one uh, to get the car up and running uh, and then I went off to Quick Fit to get the exhaust replaced. The exhaust had been blowing quite badly because the back box had broken away from the rest of the exhaust. Um, it didn't go very well at Quick Fit, um, despite the fact the bloke told me it would take two hours from arriving there to picking the car up. It actually took him two hours uh, to tell me that it needed a new exhaust, which I already knew because I told him that. Um, and uh, he said it was going to cost 294 quid for um, <laughs> a mild steel exhaust, including fitting. Now, when I asked him how much the fitting, how much the fit, how much of that price the fitting was, uh, he said that they don't break it down like that. Uh, it's just a one all one and all inclusive price now. By my reckoning, an exhaust for a Fiesta is less than a hundred quid. So, for a half hour job, um, that's two hundred pounds worth of labour. So, uh, you can imagine, um, you can imagine how that situation ended up. So I headed back over here with the exhaust still blowing, um, not really knowing what I was going to do. And then it suddenly occurred to me that there's a place um, about a mile away. It's not been open very long called BP Autos. Um, it's on the on the Honeybourne Road here. Um, down in towards Honeybourne and um, I thought I'd pop in there. I've been there before, he put some um, Land Rover tyres on rims for me for the Series 3 project. Um, uh, anyway, it turns out that he does tyres, exhaust, batteries, servicing, all sorts of stuff. It's fantastic. Um, uh, really decent place, nice bloke. And uh, he quoted me 110 quid fitted for the, uh, for the exhaust and within 90 minutes he'd got the part in, fitted it uh, and I was away again. So. Um, that's job done on the exhaust, so uh, that's BP Autos at Honeybourne near Evesham, can't recommend them highly enough. It's booked in for the MOT tomorrow and I know that there are three things, or at least three things, uh, that it'll fail on. Um, I was kind of hoping that it would be earlier in the day at this point, but uh, with the quick fit fiasco it's now getting on into the evening. Um, so I've got to try and uh, get these things done. Uh, one of them is that this headlamp on this side, um, is that in shot? Yes it is, is loose, so I need to, f it's, it's been in a little bump I think. So I need to fabricate some sort of bracket to go on there to hold that in place. Uh, secondly, the windscreen washers, um, although you can hear the pump running, the, no water comes out of the jets, so I'm hoping that's just a blockage with the car having been um, stood for so long. Uh, third thing, uh, which is something that uh, Shay at um, BP Autos picked up on, was that the handbrake isn't very effective. Um, so I'm going <laughs> to... Somewhat perversely, I'm going to leave that until last. I know I can definitely fix the headlight, I know I can fix the washers. Um, I don't know how involved um, sorting out the hand handbrake issue is. So I figure that given the limited time this evening, uh, I'll do these two things that I know about. Take it for the MOT tomorrow. If it fails on the handbrake, I'll fix that tomorrow. There may well be other things that it fails on. I've not, um, I've not had a chance to go through the car um, with a fine tooth comb. Um, I've not really thought this through, having booked it to, <laughs> booked it in for an MOT so soon and uh, I really need to get this um, all sorted out by Saturday uh, because next week I'm uh, back into a um, heavy work schedule. So first job then I think is going to be to get the windscreen washers working. To gain access to the windscreen washer tank and motor, motor's down there, I'll just pop out this headlight. It was only held in by one screw which was the one that went into there. Uh, as I mentioned earlier on, it was broken. The fitting that goes here and the... I don't know what the other one is actually. Whatever else holds it. Oh, that one. Um, that was broken as well. Um, this one on this side is complete. I can show you the complete arm there. And um, fixing onto this, um, what do you call this, slam panel here. Um, there's the broken headlight incidentally. Missing its bar there and missing its bracket down the bottom. Uh, so that's to do with a minute, I'll digress, but um, I've now got access to the um, windscreen washer tank. So a screw there and a screw there. We'll pop those out uh, and see what's going on. As I say, it's buzzing and you get a small amount of water coming through. Just disconnected the pipe for where it goes up under the windscreen. Uh, sorry, underneath the bonnet jet, uh, where the jets are. And you get a little dribble coming out of there. Um, but um, the, the volume of water doesn't um, um, doesn't kind of correlate with the noise the pump's making, so uh, something's not right. Um, I'm not sure how it works in terms of the rear windscreen, but you uh, don't get any water going to the rear windscreen either, despite the fact the, um, the pump is running. There's a third bolt 
uh, which is I'm struggling to get the camera to find. You can see at the end of my spanner, it's at the bottom of the spout, and uh, I could have taken off this mud guard liner, I think it is, um, and maybe this suspension bracket, engine bracket, sorry. But with um, with this spanner, which is a uh, um, ratcheting 10 mil, just able to undo that. I've been able to lift the uh, water tank out. I can lift it out completely, actually. Uh, I've just got it sitting there at the moment. Disconnected the two pipes. There's a black nozzle and a white nozzle. Don't know which one goes to which, but I've put a cable tie around this one to remind me that that goes onto the white one. Uh, I'm now going to try and reconnect the uh, electric cable and run it and see what happens. This is a front washer. And this is the rear. This is the washer pump removed from the tank. And it just pushes into a hole with a rubber grommet on it. Uh, and as you can see, I put it in a bucket to catch all the water because it's completely full. Um, but look what happened when I pulled it out. No water came out. And why is this? I hear you ask. Oops, coming out the top. Um, I can't hold this very well. Um, it's full of something gooey. Um, I'm going to put the camera on the tripod and then have a poke at it. Right then, pipe's reconnected, let's see what happens. Oh yeah! And what about the back? Success. Right, I'm going to give that tank a good cleaning out. Make sure there's no other residue in there. Well, that was an easy fix. Well, <laughs> no, it wasn't, it was a hell of a struggle, but at least I don't need any new parts. This is the difficult to access screw. I mean, obviously, if you took this mud guard out and, and this uh, or this uh, engine mounting, you could get to it more easily. But uh, as I was trying to avoid doing that, um, what I've done is to partially screw the uh, screw in, and I've made a little cut out on the uh, on the washer bottle. Uh, there's the original hole, and I've cut down with a junior hacksaw. So the idea is I can clip that down into place. Um, I've, I've tried and tried. Um, and I can't um, get the screw to start in its um, in its nylon um, uh, nut, whatever you would call it, insert. Um, so I'm hoping that I can just click this into place, get the other screw started, which I can reach, and then hopefully I can tighten that one down. Well, that little trick uh, works a treat. It's absolutely rock solid uh, and uh, much easier to put in. Uh, I'll put some screen wash in now and uh, make sure everything's working. Excellent. Brilliant. Next job, headlamp. In the long term, I'm going to get a new headlamp. Uh, what I've done uh, for now is I've reattached that. It wasn't actually screwed in its proper hole. I've put it back where it was and located the tab that's inside the uh, wing there on the edge of the headlamp. And that's actually a lot more sturdy than it was. Um, I'm going to fabricate something to go in there between that mounting there that's the original one, that's where it had been bodged in recently by somebody else. So I'm just going to stick something across there to hold that together. Uh, and in here, uh, where the tab's broken off, I'm just going to drill a hole in what remains of it through into this plastic here and put a self-tapper in there. Uh, and I reckon that'll be um, good enough for the time being. Right then, I've put a self-tapping screw into there to hold the bottom. And uh, put this bit of band between the original fixing, a couple of uh, self-tappers into the case there. That's going nowhere, it doesn't look brilliant, but uh, it'll do the job. You can't see it when the bonnet's shut anyway. And uh, I've put the original, <laughs> the original, uh, one of a previous owner's uh, attempts at holding the front together with all these various screws uh, back in, and it's all, it's all kind of there. So uh, then that's pretty good. Um, so the only thing outstanding, as far as I know, is the handbrake. Um, effectiveness but as it's now getting on for half past eight and i'm quite cold and quite tired and quite hungry uh, i'm going to send it for the mot as it is uh, and see what comes up and uh, i can deal with it tomorrow 
took the car for its MOT yesterday, um, and uh, to my amazement, uh, the only thing that it failed on uh, was the handbrake, the thing that I knew about, and I, whereas I expected there was going to be a list, um, well, perhaps not as long as my arm, but I thought there might be one or two things to deal with. Um, uh, there weren't any at all. Uh, the MOT chap said that uh, the car's actually in really good nick. Um, so that's a bit of a result. Uh, so uh, he presented me with a refusal certificate, if you can see that, um, with um, uh, two or three things about the uh, about the rear brakes. Oh, I tell you, there was one other thing. Uh, the headlamp bulb was loose in the um, near side headlamp. Uh, probably knocked it out when I was um, uh, realigning the um, the fitting uh, yesterday. Uh, but that's popped back into place. So that's not an issue. Um, the uh, MOT guy said he thought that the handbrake cables were seized, which hardly surprised me, as uh, when I first started up and drove it out from the yard, it dragged the back wheels down the yard for a few minutes before eventually uh, they came free with a bang and the handbrake never appeared to be very good. Um, so, um, on the way back from the MOT, I popped into BP Autos down at Honeybourne just to ask them about, um, about the handbrake. Uh, he said that um, he thought both handbrake cables would want replacement, and... Um, the uh, the shoes would want cleaning off, freeing off, and uh, you know generally sorting out. Um, so I decided, uh, given that time is of the essence, just to stick it in there with him. Um, he can get up on his ramp a lot more easily than I can uh, crawl about uh, underneath on my little ramps. Um, and uh, it's now done. And uh, he only charged me 150 quid. So I'm absolutely delighted with that. Uh, I've just been down to the MOT place um, for a retest, for my free retest. And here we have. MOT pass with no advisories. It's just absolutely fit to go. So very pleased about that. Um, so part three, as it was expected to be, um, where I'm fixing a whole load of faults for the car, isn't going to happen. Um, in fact, I'm not even sure when part three is going to be now. My dad's going to borrow this car for a few weeks um, while he's getting sorted out with another car. Uh, so I'll come back and uh, when I get it back and perhaps do a bit of uh, cosmetic work on it. But for the meantime, uh, it's all good and safe to go. Uh, so if you're keeping track of the total, um, it was £100 purchase price, £110 for the exhaust, uh, so that's 220 150 for the uh, handbrakes, uh, so that's uh, 360 And the new battery uh, was 60 quid thereabouts, so that's 420 is that right? 420 oh, plus the hands manual, 5 quid. Uh, 425 is there anything else? No, that's it, isn't it? So, including purchase price, uh, 425 quid, and uh, and I'm on the road. So I'm actually really pleased with that, and uh, having driven about in this for the last few days, um, it, I, I think it's a fantastic little car. Uh, it zips about, um, you know, really easily. Uh, really comfortable, nice to drive. It's, um, it's fabulous. Uh, so there's a bit of a result. Uh, so perhaps I'll see you in a few weeks' time, and we might address the um, giving it a bit of a clean because it's pretty filthy uh, inside and out. Um, perhaps get the uh, upholstery cleaned up, uh, sort out one or two cosmetic issues, um, and uh, anything else that comes to light in the meantime while my uh, my dad is driving about in it. Um, and we'll deal with that. So I uh, hope you've enjoyed these uh, these first two videos. Um, if you have. Um, then write a comment underneath. If you haven't, then please write a comment underneath. I'll be interested to say, uh, to hear what you have to say, um, what you think that I could have done better. And uh, give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed already, then uh, please do that. It really does help to uh, keep the channel going. Thanks very much then, and I'll see you again. Bye-bye.